What's up and welcome to the channel. My name is Tag Shot and thank you guys for joining us. Today we have the Smith & Wesson Model 610 on the table and we're going to tell you everything we know about it, pros and cons, how it shoots and features, specs, uses and how I like the gun so far. So uh, make sure you guys uh, stay tuned. This is going to be an awesome video and big thanks to Smith & Wesson for sending this gun out for us to review. One of two guns, one of two Model 610s that they sent us, and I will tell you why here in a minute. Uh, big thanks to our patron of the week, Mike P. Man, we appreciate you and all your support. Uh, big supporter, personal friend. I appreciate you, man. And if you want to support the channel, Patreon is the best way to do it. We are viewer supported amongst other ways. You guys are awesome. And if you want to see more guns like, uh, I don't know, maybe the Mini 14. Look at that beauty. Straight from Ruger. Or the Patreon selected gun. How about this one? Oh, let me build my muscles up. The Ruger Precision Rifle. That one's coming soon. Patreon selected. If you'd like to help us select guns, get first shots videos, get first look videos, uh, and patches. I just dropped that design. Some people, oddly enough, said it. They thought I was a devil worshiper. <laughs> I, I think that's a weird correlation. It's a skull with... Uh, guns in the background you guys see the logo every time you click on our channel don't know where they got that correlation but most people liked it and uh, if you want to join the five dollars tier on patreon until july 4th i will send you a patch they're going to be ready in the next week so as soon as they're ready i'll send you one out um after july 4th it becomes a ten dollar tier but you still get all the awesome benefits that we have over on patreon and one more thing i listened to you guys you did not want to see motorcycle content incorporated with this channel i know it kind of sucks but a lot of you guys wanted to see the motorcycle content so i made a brand new channel it's called headshot rides everything motorcycle i ask that you guys please come over there and subscribe to that channel i got a lot of content that i plan on doing for that one as well all right so let's go ahead and get started with the model 610 from smith and wesson open it up standard hard case from smith and wesson padding you're going to get your basic information right there booklet lock all that good stuff the oil wrapped paper since 1852 it's such a nice touch i love seeing this um so there you go you're also going to get your key locks for your internal lock i know some of you guys hate that i'm not a big fan of it myself but we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a little bit And let's put the gun like that. You're going to get three moon clips, okay? You're not going to get six. Two different designs here, which is a part of the reason that I got two of these things, okay? But we will, we'll get into that, I can assure you. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with basic features of the firearm. Let's start with specs here really quick, actually. So MSRP on this one, it is in 10 millimeter. Uh, MSRP is 969. It has a barrel length of four inches. I opted for that one. You can also go with the six inch version if you'd like. Length, overall length is 9.5 inches. Weight is 42.6 ounces. So this is no lightweight. This is no daily concealed carrier. That's for sure. Um, and then the height from the top of the sight down to the grip is six inches. And the grip itself from the top right here down is four and a half inches. Okay, just to give you an idea of what that looks like. Let's bring in the CZ P10C, a popular semi-auto, because I really have no other revolvers to compare this to because it's such a, a big gun. But if we just put them kind of like that, you get an idea. Uh, kind of like that. <laughs> the gun's huge, okay? It is definitely not a concealed carrier gun, but that does not mean it doesn't have its uses. Uh, this thing is actually on the end frame. I've already checked this, by the way. And this gun showcased in 1990, all right, is when this thing released. Uh, ran until, I think, 98, six-year hiatus after that. Came back in 05 for a short stint, and now it's back in 2019. More and more people are getting into the 10 millimeter, so they decided to come out with it. And also, Ruger has their 10 millimeter too, so you know those guys are going to compete, uh, definitely. So let's go ahead around the gun, and let's, let's look at some of these features. So an interchangeable front sight, it comes black from the factory. It is serrated to keep that glare off. Uh, all stainless steel construction, which we come to expect from Smith & Wesson. Um, open up the cylinder here. See your crane, your ejector rod, all that good stuff. 
six shot revolver and of course you can shoot 40 smith and wesson out of this gun uh adjustable rear sight all right very glockish in the u-notch style all right but it is adjustable straight from the factory which is cool as well serrated up there uh serrated on top of course pin front sight coming around here trigger it is a double or single action whichever way you would like to uh, run it synthetic grip it is very rubbery okay it's got a nice feel in the hand not too hard not too soft one thing we're going to be doing soon is testing out those crimson trace grips which are a full replacement for this and give you the uh, laser combo in addition to that and they're not too bulky either which i kind of like but we'll get to that in a later video of course smith and wesson you're going to open up the cylinder from this way all right there's your cylinder release right there and then of course your lock your internal lock now from what I read, I did some research on this because when I first started posting pictures of this thing, people said they didn't want anything to do with the Clinton gun, blah, blah, blah. I wish they would just keep those locks off of these guns because I, I don't know how long those terms were in, uh, were in standing. I mean, Smith & Wesson was in trouble in the 90s, okay? And by 2000, 2001, they had to make some compromises, which they thought at the time was a good idea. But through ownership changes and all kinds of things, they've brought the company back to what it is today. Um, but hopefully in the future, we'll just see that go away. There are some models that don't have that, but I'm, you know, this is one of them. The good news is, is that all of the credible people that have put up you know, oh, my internal lock jammed up my gun, blah, blah, blah. Most of the ones that are seen as credible are the light scandium frame, high power, high velocity rounds. This is not one of those guns. It's a heavy gun with a high, high velocity round, but it seems like the lighter weight, higher velocity rounds, something, uh, obviously that's a bad idea anyways, but it was causing these things to lock up the gun. Sometimes in some cases, completely locking it up where you'd have to take it to a gunsmith to undo that. But I don't see that being a problem on this gun. At least I can tell you up to this point, we have had no issues of that sort uh, from this lock. I don't use it. I haven't even brought the key out of the little plastic uh, little baggie that they give it to you. Uh, I just plan on bypassing that altogether. All right. But I did want to mention that in the grip, you do have slight finger grooves right there. Okay. And you can see I have smaller hands, but I'm still able to get a good bite on this gun. I'm still able to get my hands up where I feel like I'm comfortable and I don't feel like the gun is too big. Now I did notice from just from doing a some quick research that you can buy some high-vis sights for these if you would like. It's just pinned up here so you can change that front blade out. But other than that, it's a revolver, all right? Simple pieces, simple mechanism. Of course, you have your uh, cylinder stop right there, your little hand internally. We're going to take some nice pictures for you guys. Um, but overall, very simple design. Very smooth, too, and that's one thing I noticed from the from the beginning is just pulling this thing in double action is so smooth. So I'm trying to trying to think why people say Smith revolvers are so smooth and that double action, but it is, it really is. Now keep in mind we're we're, we're just now getting into the revolver game and we did the uh, Smith or the, uh, we did the Ruger uh, SP 101. And I can tell you just, the difference between the two is night and day. And the single action is awesome. Of course, we'll go over the trigger here in a little bit. All right, so before we get to the shooting, I want to kind of tell you guys what what the issue was that we were having here, okay? Because we were having some issues with it, and I did figure it out. When I first got the revolver from Smith, they sent me three of these moon clips, which I guess is the original design. You kind of get an idea how that works. Now, what I was doing is I was, I, I noticed they make tools for these and makes it real simple and you just kind of pull and twist at the same time they come right off. Well, as I was doing that, these clips were becoming bent. And one little cool trick I found out too, if you got a pair of pliers, if they're kind of tough to get off, needle nose work better if you're, you know, wanting to save the cases, but for this demonstration, I don't care, but you can take pliers, you can grab the case, twist it, and it'll come right off. 
like I said, needle nose actually do work better. I don't know what I did with mine, but just twist and pull and they'll come off. Just kind of hold the moon clip there. But Smith & Wesson sent me these original moon clips. I was having issues with it. What the issue I was having is the cylinder wouldn't rotate. So I take it in double action or single action. I'd get to one specific cylinder and it was like an act of God trying to pull this thing back. I mean, it really, all the pressure I could put on this thing, it was giving me an issue. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? I contacted Smith. They said, hey, we're going to send you a new one out. Just send the other one back and we'll, we'll see what's going on. Well, before I sent it back, I wanted to get this one in and test them side by side. I did that. But I also noticed that the moon clip they sent the second time was much different. See how much more metal you have there? A lot more solid, a lot more metal, and a lot sturdier. So what was going on when I was pulling the rounds off, and you can kind of hopefully tell from that right there, is it was bending ever so slightly, causing a malfunction in the gun. So to test this even further, I took one of the old moon clips, loaded it up. One of the new moon clips loaded it up in the new gun. Put this one through it, ran just fine. Put all three of these through it, and it would lock up on one cylinder. Okay, so if you get one of these, make sure that you get the updated moon clips. Okay, because this will cause you to have issues. And also, try not to do it with your hands like I was doing, being a noob. Because as you do this, you're trying to twist it off. And if it's not coming off as easily as you thought, you know, either buy one of the tools or use a pair of pliers, something to get that off to where you're not bending these. Okay. So when you start seeing issues throughout the video, I wanted to let you guys know what the issue was. It wasn't on the gun. It was on those moon clips. All right. But they did a running change and updated them. All right. So let's get to the range. Let's show you how this gun shot. And then afterwards, we'll show you the trigger, the weight on the trigger, Pros and cons, and our overall opinion on this 10 millimeter Smith & Wesson revolver. We will see you guys in a minute. Good? Mm-hmm. All right, 40 yard shots with the model 610 uh, Smith & Wesson revolver. Of course, I'm gonna do it in single action. Give it a go here. Let's try it out. Ah, uh, 
how many I missed? I missed two there. Two. Uh, this gun in single action, you feel like you can hit anything. Um, that just pretty much speaks for itself. This gun is awesome uh, in single action, in single action especially. Uh, even with the blacked out front sight, this, this thing is, is really good. Five. This thing is sweet. All right, what's up, guys? I'm going to tell you what's been going on with the Model 610. Some of you guys have been asking about this gun and uh, and when the review's coming out. So, what we were having, we were having some issues with the uh, original 610 that we had rotation issues, okay? And you would go to pull it on, you pull the hammer down, and it seemed to be only one cylinder was having the issue. So, um, Kept trying it, kept trying it, cleaned it, nothing worked. So Smith & Wesson sent us another one out to try it. But what they also sent us was these, I, I assume it's a an, an, uh, running update moon clip. So if you look at, let me put this, put this down a minute. If you look at the original ones here compared to the updated ones here, I believe this is where the whole problem is. Now keep in mind, I don't have one of the tools to take the old casings off, okay? So I would just take them, pull them, twist them, get it out of there. Um, and I think that little bit of a twist, because of the way these are designed, has bent it to the point where it won't let the cylinder rotate any further. Now look how much more solid these over here look on my, on my right, your left, uh, compared to the original. A lot more metal. Um, and not not as much of a of a gap uh, in between the two rounds there you have mainly metal with a little bit of a split right there okay so I believe that's the issue going on and I want to show you guys on camera what's happening so we're gonna try the original ones first see if we have the issue and then uh, try the updated ones and see if those have the issue as well and one thing you'll tell even even as well like if I just hold them like that look how much more solid this one seems to be than this one right here so let's try it out this is the original one let's see what happens okay already See what's going on there? Try to pull it back. It's really hard to pull the trigger back. All right, let's try it again. Put my ear in. Once again, I mean, I'm really pulling on that trigger and nothing's happening. Okay, it looks like the cylinder is locked up. I mean, I'm using a lot of force there, guys. Okay, so let's get it out of there. And it almost locks up the, the whole gun there. I know that's not the way you're supposed to do it, but it wouldn't open. So let's put that one down and see that all the shots fired, but that one. Okay. So I was thinking, man, what's going on with this cylinder? It, it, I, I can't see it being out of time. I mean, Smith and Wesson is known for their revolvers. They make high quality stuff. Here's, here's the new one. smooth as day so it's a different gun altogether it's different from the first one using those same original moon clips this is the problem we were having okay so if you have one of these guns you may want to contact Smith & Wesson and see if they can get you the updated moon clips because like I said I believe this is our issue 
All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Holy moly. This gun, especially in single action, took me a little while. Even though the double action is smooth, it took me a little while to get a hang of it. But man, in single action, this gun is awesome. That single action is just crazy good. I want to show you the weight here. Let's show you in double action first. I imagine it's somewhere around 10 pounds. Oh, two pounds. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. That definitely ain't right. Let me try to, let me hold it up here so I don't have any involvement. All right, there we go. 11 pounds. What am I doing? I'm trying to cycle it. 11 pounds, 11 ounces. Try one more time. 11 pounds, 12 ounces. Okay. A lot smoother than it looks, I'll tell you that. Let's try it in single action where the money is. Make sure I get my hand off of that cylinder. Five pounds. No. I think I started pulling that early. Hold on, let's see. So yeah, five pounds, seven ounces. One more time, just for good measure. Five pound eight, five pound eight ounces right there. Uh, the gun is awesome in, in single action, and it's good in double action. You just got to get used to it. I am no Jerry Michalak with one of these things, that's for sure. But the gun is an awesome shooter, and I just felt like I could hit anything, literally anything. No, I didn't shoot 40 through it. I know you can do it, but I, I just, I didn't. All right. I like the 10 mil anyways. These are already fired casings, but just want to show you what this looks like. If I can get it lined up like this. Um, I did try shooting it without the moon clips too because I thought I thought when we first took the original gun out, I was like, well, maybe it is the moon clips, blah, blah, blah. If that'll go in there, obviously it's not so easy. But um, And I did try just loading rounds just in there. Obviously that gets annoying after a while. You just have to turn it upside down and all of that kind of stuff. These make it a lot easier loading and unloading and all of that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, so the gun did great at the range. Uh, we had a good time with it. We shot 250 rounds of 10 mil out of this gun. So uh, it was an expensive trip, but definitely a fun trip. And the trigger on this gun is awesome. And besides the issues that I showed you uh, because of those moon clips, like I said, if you get one, just make sure you get the updated moon clip because that makes all of the difference. As you would expect with a Smith & Wesson revolver, once we got that issue figured out, we had no issues, which is obviously a good thing. All right. What about uses for this gun? Because it is a big, heavy gun. Uh, first of all, I would say personal protection. Okay. Home defense, maybe. You can't light, you cannot mount a light, I don't think, of any kind. So you'd have to carry a light kind of underneath, you know, that kind of thing. And the recoil on this gun, because it's 42 ounces, is really not that bad at all. All right, that weight soaks up a lot of the recoil, uh, which is a good thing. All right, but not the best home defense gun. I would definitely say a uh, target gun. If you want to <laughs> impress your friends with your 10 millimeter, that's definitely something you could do. Uh, personal protection out in the woods, definitely a great like outside the waistband hunting type of gun. Um, it, you know, there's some scattered reports on, on can this thing take down a bear, but from what I've seen, uh, the reports are pretty pretty clear. This thing, if, as long as your shot placement is good, you can take down a bear with this round, which is pretty impressive. Personal protection, definitely not everyday carry. This is not something I can see anybody really carrying every single day. Unless you can carry outside the waistband, then you may get away with that, but not ideal uh, for concealed carry. All right, and that leads us into our pros and cons. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the pros here really quick. Uh, it is a beautiful revolver, all right, from Smith & Wesson, one of the best-known revolver makers out there. Interchangeable sights, a nice set of sights, all right, and that's one complaint I have of most revolvers are the sights are just garbage. On this one, you have a decent uh, rear adjustable sight and a uh, and a nice front sight there that you can swap out with a high vis, which I may actually eventually do because I just I'm going to treat this like a target gun. Or if I'm out in the woods and I want to be able to protect myself against pretty much anything where I live, um, I can do that. The single action on this gun. Let me show you. I don't know if I showed you the trigger. Let me show you the double action here. Now you get it at that point right there, and it breaks. And I pretty much got this down now. It took a little while, but get it at that point, 
and it breaks single action right there right there all right really nice trigger great trigger on this gun really like that and these grips are actually comfortable man it really helps to uh, when you have a nice set of grips like this, they're, they're obviously, you know, smooth, not too aggressive. They got a nice premium kind of look to them, which I, I enjoy, but I like the more rubberized feel in the hand. It just feels good. And with a round like that, you, uh, definitely appreciate that. It's easy to get your hand up there with that big hammer. Just get it back there. Rotate the cylinder. Really good. Okay. Smooth function, of course, with the ejector rod and everything. And that's one thing I thought that maybe was going on is maybe it was out of time. Maybe the hand was messing up. I don't, you know, the stop. I didn't know what to think. But uh, once we got past those issues, man, I have fallen in love with this revolver. And it's just such a beautiful piece. Uh, cons on it are if you get these clips right here, make sure you buy some aftermarket ones that are more sturdy. Or maybe hit up Smith & Wesson and see if they can send you the updated clips. All right. Also, eh, the pricing. And this is something we know with Smith & Wesson revolvers is they are not cheap. MSRP is $969. You can, of course, find them cheaper than that. But it's an expensive gun. In today's world, I just got to mention it, when it comes even to 10 millimeters, you're limited to six rounds, okay? There's going to be semi-autos, if you want to go that route, that are lighter and will hold more rounds. But in today's world of semi-autos, it is a little bit antiquated for sure but if you are into revolvers and you want a nice 10 millimeter option to add to your collection uh who better than smith and wesson all right and one more kind i want to throw in there even though it didn't give me any issues a lot of people have issue with this and i and i include myself in this is the internal lock i hope smith and wesson eventually will just get rid of the whole internal lock thing like i said i don't know what the terms are that they made with the clintons back in the day but Hopefully they can just get rid of that altogether and we can all live with our Smith & Wessons and be happy in the world. So awesome trigger, beautiful gun, stainless steel design, and very accurate. All right, I felt like I could have hit the wings off of a freaking mosquito. Uh, actually, the mosquitoes are like small birds around here, but you get what I'm saying. I felt very accurate with this gun and uh, I appreciated that. The recoil was light for a 10 millimeter and being our first 10 millimeter on the channel, um, you know, obviously it's not a light semi-auto, but that weight really soaked up that round. It was very light recoiling, uh, and the sights are good on this gun. They're, they're great for a revolver. Cause that's one of my main complaints are the sights on revolvers, but I actually love these. They're, you're adjustable. You can change the front sight or the rear sight. However you want to do it. You can do that with this gun. Who knows what will come down the pipeline, but for our first 10 millimeter ever featured on the channel, this is definitely a good one. And uh, if you want to add a nice 10 millimeter revolver to the collection, maybe you go out in the woods a lot, personal protection, whatever you want. This is a good one to check out. So make sure that you guys leave us a comment down below what you think about the Smith & Wesson Model 610 coming back from the grave. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you are a power patron or up, make sure you look for your name coming in your special outro right after this. If you want to join us, want to support us, go over to Patreon. I'll leave the link for you down below. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.